So Jason Kidd is out as the head coach of the Milwaukee Bucks, a Bucks team that to me has definitely underperformed given the roster, specifically on defense as they're 25th in defensive rating, and you look at the personnel between Giannis, Middleton, Bledsoe, Brogdon, Tony Snell, and you think that this team can play some defense. Now, of course, John Henson and Thon Maker are not the best defensive centers, and they had Greg Monroe earlier in the season. But even still, with that much perimeter defense and that much switchability, you'd think the Bucks, at bare minimum, would be like 11th, 12th in defense or so. And I think that would allow them to be a better offensive team because they're currently 12th in offense, which I don't think is too horrible. It might be a little underachieving, but without there being a a second big-time scorer on this team, namely Jabari Parker, I think it's... I'm not going to destroy Jason Kidd for the, this team on offense. Well, a little bit. We'll get into it. But defensively, they should have been way better than they are. And I think a big problem is that Jason Kidd, he implemented this trapping style of defense that caught the NBA by surprise like two years ago. Or actually, it was it was a while back now. It was in 2015, the Bucks had the fourth best defense in the NBA. And that was because... Teams just weren't really ready for them to just trap on pick and rolls all the time. You know, you had Giannis, you had Middleton, you had uh, Michael Carter Williams, Jared Dudley. It was a tall team with a number of good perimeter defenders, and, you know, it allowed them to get to the playoffs. And then the seasons as they go on, I mean, in 2016, they had the 23rd ranked defense. In 2017, it was 19th, and then this year it's 25th. Teams have figured it out, okay? You got to move the ball around the perimeter. You make sure that when you run a pick and roll, you're running it with your better playmakers. I mean, hell, even DeMar DeRozan has figured this thing out by now, and that was a big criticism of him for a while, was he didn't really know how to attack when defenses were swarming on him. So it was time to adjust, and Jason Kidd did not adjust. And I think a big problem with this Bucks team has been they haven't really chosen one specific area of defense to be really good at because typically that's what good defensive teams do, right? You look at the Atlanta Hawks who were one of the best defensive teams in the league for a while with Horford, Millsap, and all them. Their mentality was to swarm the paint and just swarm ball handlers all the time. Now, as a result, they gave up a lot of three-pointers but they were still one of the best defensive teams in the league for a a long stretch. I mean, the year they won 60 games, they were the sixth best defense, but they were also dead last in the NBA in three-point attempts allowed, as well as uh, made three-pointers. They were 29th in the league in terms of teams hitting threes on them, but they were still a great defensive team because they had a mentality, they stuck with it, and... You know, it just worked out for him. I mean, on the flip side, Atlanta was towards the uh, best in the league in terms of free throw attempts by their opponent. So they were able to swarm ball handlers but not foul them either. And that's tough to do, but that's the type of thing you need to do to be a great defensive team. And, of course, those Hawks teams had Millsap and Horford, who are two very good defensive bigs. But, like I said, you know, 25th, Really, for this Bucks team, you should have been at least around number 10. And, you know, Jason Kidd just never made that adjustment. So, for that reason alone, yeah, I think he deserved to be out of there. David Fisdale was a good defensive coach with the Grizzlies. I think it makes a lot of sense for him to come in here with this Bucks team. But we can talk about Jason Kidd's offense some. Now, again, I'm not going to kill him as much here because... They don't have Jabari, and even if Eric Bledsoe's good, there isn't really a second scorer on this team. I mean, Middleton's putting up 20 a game, but I think Middleton does kind of hurt the offense sometimes because he does these post-ups where he'll just back down the opposing guy, and, and it's not even like Middleton's that bad at doing it, but when you just do it the amount of times that he'll do it, especially in bigger moments of the game, that is not good, if you would ask me. 
So things like that. But if we're going to get to some specific numbers, mainly the way that Jason Kidd uses Giannis. Here's one for you. As the pick and roll roll man, Giannis is only averaging 1.8 rolls to the basket a game. Doesn't that seem kind of low for a guy who's super athletic and is, what's he on, a 6'11"? He's basically 7 feet tall, he can jump through the gym, and he's only rolling to the basket under 2 times a game? That seems a little weird if you ask me. That should definitely be bumped up more. I think Giannis and Bledsoe together could be very effective. And another one is Giannis is only averaging 2.5 uh, pick and rolls a game where he's the ball handler. Again, seems kind of low. I don't think Giannis has like 9 to 10 assists per game potential, but a solid 6 to 8 a game, sure. And I think he should just have more opportunities with the ball in his hands going to work. And I think Chris Middleton should probably have a little less because Middleton's usage rate right now is... 24 and a half, nearly 25 usage rate for Chris Middleton. I think of Middleton as more of a guy who can be a spot shooter, attack closeouts, do some stuff in transition, but shouldn't be handling the ball too often, but, well, I mean, he is. Now, to Middleton's credit, his turnover percentage is pretty low, but even so, I think the pecking order should definitely be Giannis number one, Bledsoe number two, and then Middleton a relatively distant third. I mean, Giannis and Bledsoe still do lead the team in usage rate, but Middleton's a little too close for comfort on Bledsoe, if you ask me. More pick and rolls, more spotting up for Middleton, less post-ups, those sort of things, I think can can help your offense. But ultimately, if Jabari Parker was here, I think this team would probably be a top-10 offensive team. So... The offense is more nitpicking, if you ask me, in terms of what I'm doing for Jason Kidd. The problem was the defense. And then you add that to all the little random weird moments he's had this season where he'll just be like, oh yeah, we intentionally fouled this guy here because we didn't want them to get like this playoff or whatever. Like I think everybody kind of remembers that thing. Where I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was just like, Everyone on Twitter was like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, just do what everyone else does in this particular situation because that's what you're supposed to do. I don't remember what it was. It was something like we didn't want to give up a four-point play or we didn't want to give up a three-point. It was really stupid. Uh, another beautiful moment of Jason Kidd's telling Thon Maker to shoot more mid-range jumpers. Excuse me? Does he not understand the significance of a... Seven foot one center who could potentially knock down threes. I mean, that'd be a spacing heaven, you know? Just just picture Giannis or Bledsoe going to work and just the entire paint is just wide open. You ask Thon Maker to shoot mid-range jumpers while the spacing is gone because now the opposing big man only has to take like one step and then they're in the paint. So that was a really foolish um, suggestion by Jason Kidd. You just you add you add all these things up and it leads to he just wasn't doing a good job. So I think whoever the new head coach would be, I think that there's an interim coach who's going to be stepping in for the rest of this season. I would say pick a mentality on defense, whether it's give up less threes, whether it's switch all the time, whether it's clog the paint and stick with it, rather than this thing where they trap everything but then they also swarm the paint. Like it, you can't ask your defense to do too many things. Okay, because it's not going to work. The Warriors switch. The Celtics switch a little less than the Warriors, but they switch a lot, you know? Pick something and just get really good at that one thing and realize that you might not be as good in something else, but, I mean, it's working out for teams. So, yeah. I agree with the firing of Jason Kidd. Hopefully whoever the new guy comes and... um just does things a little better.